Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. So in today's video, we're going to be making another vintage inspired Nike sweater. It's a little bit of a different design. I've got like an idea in mind. It's kind of similar to the one we made. If you haven't seen that video, I did it about three weeks ago. So just go back and you can see how I did that one. But this one is going to be similar style, but uh, a little bit of a different version. I'm kind of excited to test this out. So I'll show you guys the process and we'll make one together again. And I'm also going to be doing a different color as well. So a brown color thread has been really really popular and like a lot of people have asked if i can do brown on cream and when i see vintage sweaters that's a colorway that i see a lot so we're going to do that colorway today if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button and let's start this so over here on my computer i've just opened up a photoshop file and all i've done is i've typed the words nike in like a block text you can use pretty much whatever text you want but now what i do is for the inside so for the color of the text I have it as just white as you guys can see here but the trick is if you right click on the Nike font on this side if I can just show you guys so if you right click over where your Nike uh, text is and you press blending options it will show up this screen right here now all you have to do is you got to press onto the stroke and have the stroke as black and I usually have it about like in between 8 to 12 right here which this is i don't know what px means but it pretty much means the thickness of the stroke line so as you guys can see i'm just gonna bring it back to eight and then that is what this looks like now essentially what i'm gonna do is get, save this as a jpeg file because that's just what i usually use for my embroidery software i'm gonna put that from that computer onto this microsoft windows like pc computer type of thing and open up my embroidery hatch program okay so i've got the camera set up showing my laptop screen i'm hoping that the glare is not annoying me too much but i think this is the best angle i get so i've just dragged in my the glare don't worry about the glare <laughs> what about the crack freaking screen thing? <laughs> yes the crack you can't really tell the crack screen but a whole laptop is definitely broken but all we're gonna do is we're going to auto digitize this now this isn't um, normal digitizing auto digitizing makes it like a lot faster and easier for me to use and it doesn't take a lot of time so this program was quite expensive bear in mind on the left hand side we're gonna press auto digitize embroidery then it's gonna show this page right here and now at the bottom it says reduce to two colors which is correct because all I need is technically the black outline of the Nike but the second color is also the white right here so now we're just going to press OK and OK and then just like that that is already digitized and pretty much ready to embroider now this is auto digitizing digitizing is completely different and this program as I said just then it costs a lot of money but now this is the Nike outline design I want to do however I'm going to show you guys the finished one of what I'm trying to create. Can you guys see right there? There is three ticks. So this design I think is really cool and I reckon will look really nice on a jumper. So all I did as well is I imported a Nike logo tick and I auto digitized that. I placed it three in a row as straight as possible. I lined them up with all these lines till I had this final design and pretty much voila, it's done. I feel like I made that sound really, really easy and made it sound like it took like two minutes to do. But honestly, when I did the final logo, it took me probably about half an hour or so. So yes, auto digitizing is easy, but it does take a while to get used to it. And the way I explained it seemed very, very easy. However, you just have to match everything correctly. And sometimes with auto digitizing, it doesn't make it embroidery friendly. Like if, if I can kind of explain it just doesn't stitch the way that you want it to do it kind of as it's just auto digitizing it just does it itself it does whatever the machine wants it to do you can't change the direction of thread and all of that so it's a little bit of a trial and error with that but for me because i'm kind of on a time time frame most of the time and i'm always doing a lot of different logo embroideries that's why i auto digitize things because it's a lot faster and easier because if i were to just normally do it I'm pretty sure I always like follow people that do it and it takes them hours just to digitize a logo. Now, I do not have time for that because that just takes a lot of effort. But um, let's save this logo. Let's put it onto the machine. Let's embroider it and see how it looks. Fingers crossed it doesn't take too long and that the stitching is okay because I have not tested this before. What 
jumper is all hooped up and ready to go. If you don't know how I hoop the jumpers, just watch some of our previous videos and you'll know because I'm pretty sure in every single one of them I've been showing you. Whoop! Are you right, Biggs? Okay, let's put her into the machine. Okay, so the file is loaded onto the machine and saved. So what I want is I want the outside Nike uh, text to be a brown color and then I want the ticks to be a white color. So all I'm going to go here is my brown color thread is on line number two. So I'm going to press number two and I'm pretty sure I already did it. And then the second color I want it to be is number 10, which is going to be the ticks. So all I do is press number 10 on the machine and you guys can see number two and number 10. Now I'm going to press OK and that pretty much just saves everything. And as I always mentioned, you need to trace the machine first to make sure the needles don't hit the edges. I've just cut my backing stabilizer. The size that I made this stabilizer is pretty much roughly the size of my hoop just because the logo goes nearly edge to edge of the hoop. If you have a smaller logo, you don't have to have stabilizer as big, but let's put this below and have it in between the arm length and the sweater. So just to show you guys right there, it is not straight. I still have to fix it, but that's where the stabilizer sits in between the sweater and this arm length right there. Now all you gotta do is press this button and pray that nothing goes wrong. See you guys in a little bit. Once it's done. Honestly, I love how the colors are kind of like subtle and neutral. You can definitely have the ticks as brown as well or any other colors, but I really like the white on brown with the cream. Let's take this magnetic hoop off. I always try to be as gentle as possible when taking off the backing because there's such thin lines with the outline of the Nike text. I don't want it to move when I'm removing the stabilizer. I've also just kept the stabilizer, stabilizer that's inside the letters just so that it holds its shape as well. This also does hold through the washing but sometimes if the customer wants to remove it they can. However, I'm just going to leave it like that from now on. And that is the finished jumper. Honestly, the brown looks so nice. I just got to get rid of these blue water, water soluble texture marks. This is also the texture that I'm always talking about when I use. You can put this on fabric, it comes out as blue, but as soon as you put water on it, it just dissolves and washes away. It's honestly the best thing I've ever bought for embroidery and just sewing and everything in general. I prefer using this over chalk, just because with chalk, sometimes it's really hard to get rid of the chalk marks. Like even if you get a bit of water or like wipes and stuff, it just doesn't come away. Whereas this, no matter what, every single time, it's gonna wash away. done this is the finished nike sweater as you guys saw from the b-roll i didn't wear it on because firstly this is a size extra large i made it extra large because i have always been selling extra larges so i thought there's no really point making my size but it's also like nearly 40 degrees inside i think it's 35 degrees inside the warehouse how's about to roast me <laughs> because he's saying that i exaggerate with the weather but it's definitely really really hot I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys seem to like the last one, so I thought I'd do an updated version. I've got a couple other like logos and things I wanna make as well. So I'll be doing more of those and showing more and more of like the digitizing stuff and behind the scenes of how I create the things on Photoshop and all that. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you guys are all staying well and safe. See you guys on our next video on Sunday. Bye guys.